Hi, third grade. Today we are going to look at unit eight, week one, day two. So let's get started with our drill sounds warm up. Repeat after me. I V E give iv. O S T post oast. O L T colt old. O L D cold old. I L D wild eyed. I N D find eind. A N G fang ang. A N K bank ank. I N G ring ing. I N K pink ink. Nice work. All right, listen up for our new concept for today. Boys and girls, Ms. DeRosa, we are on day two of unit eight. So that means we're going to try to do some spelling. We talked a lot in, on day one about reading words and scooping them one syllable at a time if you don't know how to read it or if it doesn't look familiar to you. But today we're going to talk about spelling those words. So guess what? You're going to need your uh, magnetic tile board. And you know how uh, we talked about putting a line on our board? Please be very careful, but if you want to make uh, some lines, and that's how we're going to separate our syllables. So, the first syllable, the first word we're going to do is tumble. Echo? Yeah, like you could tumble out of bed or you could tumble down the hill. It means to sort of roll maybe with your body. So, what's the first syllable? That's right, tum. Spell it for me. Good. Go ahead and spell it on your board. Go ahead and pull down the letters T U M. So it should look like that, right? And the second syllable is bowl, echo. And right now we're only talking about the consonant L E syllable. So that will make it a little bit easy for you. And so it's going to be B U L, right? Uh oh. That's what I hear in tumble. But what do I need? Every syllable needs one. A vowel. And what's my vowel going to be? That's right. It's that good old volunteer helper E. It's going to end all of our constant LE syllables. How about that? So here's a word. Oh my goodness. I wish I had one of these because it might mean that I had a horse. And this is something if you ride a horse, you actually sit on this, maybe some people ride bareback with no nothing, but this word is saddle, echo. Good, and that's sad, d, 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 right? A saddle. Hmm. So what's the first syllable? Sad. Let's go ahead and pull down the letters for sad. That's a word all in itself, isn't it? And what would be your second syllable? That's right, dull, and you don't have two Ds on your board. So go ahead and use a blank, and let's spell that word, saddle. I took my saddle and put it on my horse, and that's how yours would look. So let's read it all together. Sad, dull, saddle. Have you all ever been on a saddle or on a horse? Some people are a little afraid of that, but it's a lot of fun. And usually when you go, they just make you go very slow. So you, you can't get hurt. The next word is something I'll bet you all like to eat. And I want you to think wash off. The word is waffle. Oh, how good is that? What's the word? Waffle. That's right. What's the first syllable? Waff. So I don't think you have to tap that, but remember the ah. It's not going to be an O, so let's spell that, WAF. How, what letters did you pull down? W-A-F, and then we actually do have an extra F for the full because we have bonus letters, right? So that's how your board should look, WAFL. How about that? Have you ever been to the 
Waffle House. There are Waffle Houses all over the country, aren't there? Almost on every corner, it seems like. All right. Oh, this next word. Hmm. I wonder if you have these. The word is freckles. Echo? <laughs> What's the base word of freckles? Usually if you have freckles, you wouldn't have just one. But what would be the base word of freckles? That's right. Freckle. What's the first syllable? Freck. Now this is a tricky one because remember how you're going to spell that sound after a short vowel. This one is a little tricky. You're going to need an e and then a k. What's the second syllable? Cole. Right. So we're going to have to talk about this one because uh, it's just a little bit tricky. So it would be spelled K-L-E, right? But let's talk a little bit about this because when you scoop freck, it's going to be a CK, right? Because it comes after a short vowel. But I also need a consonant for my call for my second syllable. So it's almost as though you use this twice. You're going to use it for freck, then you're going to use it for call. And we just say freckle, right? It all just blends together. But for spelling, it would be F-R-E-C-K, and then technically it would be K-L-E. How about that? So that, that's kind of an interesting idea, isn't it? All right. The next word we're going to talk about Oh, I like this as well, because if you have a saddle, you might have a stable, and that's where you keep your horse. What's the word? Stable, or you could be stable, right, and not move. Um, uh, there's So <laughs> that word is actually used in a couple of different ways. You might uh, ask uh, somebody at your house, what are some other ways we would use the word stable? So the first syllable is what? <clears throat> Stay. Good. How are you going to spell it? I agree. S-T-A. Second syllable is bull. It's a consonant L-E. And how are you going to spell bull? That's right, B-L-E. So let's scoop this word, stable, stable. I had to go to the stable and get my saddle to ride my horse. So I don't know if you've ever been to a stable, but um, it's, it's usually uh, maybe near a barn or it's just a big place where all the horses are, are kept. So it's a safe place for the horses, and when it's cold, they have a nice place to go and stay warm and eat hay or whatever it is they eat. All right, here's my last word, and this is something you might do with a brother or sister, and the word is squabble. Mm, it means to kind of argue. What's the word? Good, squabble. What's the first syllable? Squab. Don't let that trick you. There's that qu, right? So how would you spell that first syllable? Good. S-Q-U-A-B. My second syllable is bull. And how are you going to spell it? B-L-E. Good. So it's going to look like this. Squab bull. So you can use a blank for that extra B that you need. Hey guys, that's all we're going to do today. How about that? That was pretty simple. So I will look forward to seeing you um, very soon. We're going to do some more um, consonant LE syllables together. So I'll try to find some really good words for you. All right, take care. Have a All right, next we're going to review some of our sound alike words from Unit 7, and we're actually going to learn our first new homophone pair from Unit 8. So, say this word, flower, spell it, F-L-O-U-R, and show me the signal. What is this flower? Sprinkle the flour, roll out the pizza dough. It's the ingredient used in baking, right? Say this one, flower, spell it. F-L-O-W-E-R. Do you remember the signal? Pick it. Smell it. Right. It's the living thing, right, that has petals. This word, 
throne. Spell it T H R O W N. And you throw a ball, you've thrown garbage away. Very good. This word, throne. Spell it T H R O N E. And what's the signal? Right, if you're a girl, you curtsy to the king or the queen sitting on the throne. If you're a boy, you bow to show your respect. Very good. All right, let's get our new homophone pair ready. This word is principle. Say it, principle. Spell it with me, go. P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L, principle. Very good. There is a trick I've learned. Do you see how it ends with P-A-L, pal? Yeah, a principal of a school should be your pal. You know, not buddy buddy, but he's our principal in our case. He's very nice and we could always go to him if we ever need him. Principal. So this principal, the definition that we're going to add in our student notebook is head of a school. So go ahead in your student notebook right now with the castle on the cover, turn into your vocabulary section. I'm doing that now and I'm finding the consonant P. And what page is this? Let's see. Oh yes, page 73. Oh no, not vocabulary. This isn't a word of the day. Oh my goodness, I'm mixing myself all up. This is a sound alike word. Oh my, you probably beat me today at this. L-M-N-O-P, here we are. Okay, for real, page 103. 103. Pause the video and write this for principal. Head of a school. All right, the signal for this one is going to be principals have to be strict, though. They have to make sure everyone's following the school rules and so everyone is safe and learning. And so I'm going to go look very serious and, you know, you have to be strict to make sure everyone's following the principal. Okay. The next sound alike word is principal. Say it. Principal. Let's spell this one together. Go. P. R-I-N-C-I-P-L-E, another long one, principle. Now, this principle is a belief or something one lives by. So you might go by the principle that you need to be respectful to one another. And then you not only believe that, but you live your life by that, that everyone deserves to be respected. You might have a principle of, oh, I always have to be on time. I can never be late. Or maybe you follow the principle of being responsible and always doing your work and always doing your best. Those are beliefs that you believe in and you choose to live by those. Okay, so hopefully you all have some principles that you try to live by every day. Pause the video if you need more time getting this definition down on page 103. Okay, our signal for this one is going to be, it's a belief, you believe it in here in your mind, similar to that one I know, and you live by it. So you're going to nod your head. You believe it and you act like that. You think it's a good thing to do. Okay, so let's practice those signals again. This principle, the head of the school, make sure everyone's following the rules. This principle, something you believe and you act that way. Very good. Now I want you to go ahead and take out your slate, marker, and eraser. If you're at home, you can just get out a piece of scratch paper and Get ready to play a game of guess which one. All right, I have three sentences for you. So you might want to number your paper or your board, one, two, three, and get ready to write down just the sound alike word that you hear. All right, the first sentence. The principal wants us studying math. Hmm, which principal do you think makes sense in that sentence. Write it down. 
All right, let's spell it together. Go. P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L, principal. Yeah, he would want you to study math so that you're learning. Good job. Here's the next sentence, number two. It is my principal to be on time. Oh, I just kind of said that one. It is my principal to be on time. Which one? Write it down. Okay, let's spell it. P-R-I-N-C-I-P-L-E, principle. Yeah, it's my belief that you should be on time. It's my principle. Very good. All right, the last sentence is, we like the principle at our school. Big clue there. Write it down. Which one? Not, that, not flower, sorry. Backed up too far. All right, let's spell it together. Go. P-R-I-N-C-I-P-A-L. Principle. Nice work. All right, leave those slates, markers, and erasers out because we're going to do a quick dictation dry erase. All right, hopefully by now you have your whiteboard, marker, and eraser ready, or if you're at home, a piece of paper and pencil to practice. The first thing I'm going to do is give you three sounds. So you're, if you're in school, let's use these three boxes. The first sound is ah. Uh, say it. Ah. Uh, three things. Write them. Go. Okay. Let's see how you did. Did you get? Say yes. You up a? Uh, yes. A Alaska a? Uh, yes. I animal a uh, or a? Eh. All right. Move to the second box. Your sound is ch. Say it. Ch. Two things. Go. Okay. Did you get ch chinch? Yes. Tch catch. -ch. Yes. This is our trigraph. It comes after what? A short vowel. Very good. Okay. And the last one. Think back to unit seven for this one. Z. Say it. Z. Three things. Go. Okay. Let's see if you got them all. Z. Zebra. Z. Yes. S as a suffix like bugs. Yes. E-S like a suffix in babies. All right. Very good. Erase your sounds. Now we're going to go over three review words. Practice some rules that we've had. The first word is stuck. Say it. Stuck. 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 I am stuck on this question. Spell it and mark it. Go. All right, let's compare it to mine and see how you did. S-T blend, short U, and then did you pick C-K the digraph because it comes after a short vowel? It's a closed syllable. How'd you do? Good. All right, erase that one, and let's do this word. This one has a base word and a suffix, so think of the rules. Late, latest. The latest you can turn this in is tomorrow. Latest. Spell it and mark it. All right. A lot of you need to remember this rule you're forgetting. Late. How do we spell that? L A T E. That has a silent E. It's a vowel dash E word. But when you attach, when you have a vowel dash E base word and you're attaching a vowel suffix, you have to drop the E and then attach the suffix. When you mark the word, you insert the tiny E up here to show that it's still late. It's still a vowel consonant E word, but you just attach the suffix. Did you circle it, the suffix? Good. All right, erase latest. The last review word goes back to unit seven. Tidy, tidy, Ness. I am going to inspect your desk and check on its tidiness. Tidiness. Spell and mark it. I'm wondering if anybody remembered the way that we used to write this in Unit 7 when we were learning about 
base words that end with that Y when we attach a suffix. I went ahead and did my math problem here. Tidy is the base word. That means clean. Ness is my suffix. And then in the next row, I followed the rule. Change that Y to an I and attach the suffix. Hopefully you remember to tell me what this I sounds like. Long E. Okay. Nice job. Okay, now I want to take time and let's practice our new concepts from Unit 8. Try to spell this word, raffle. Say it, raffle. So you know that in Unit 8, we've been talking about that consonant L-E syllable. So see what you can do with raffle. Okay, let's see how you did. Raff, the first syllable, R-A-F is closed. And then you need a consonant to go with the L-E. Yes, another F, F-L-E. And did you remember to cross off? That's a silent E. Okay, and how'd you do labeling your syllable types? Good? All right, we're getting better. Let's try another one. This one is juggle. Say it, juggle. I'm not so great at trying to juggle. Go ahead and try it. All right, let's see how you did. Jug, you know how to spell that word. And then did you remember that you need a consonant? L-E, cross off that silent E there. Very good. Okay, the last word that we're going to spell and mark is cable, say it, cable. I have to pay the cable bill so we can keep watching TV. Cable. Try it. All right. K is an open syllable. C-A. And then bull. B-L-E. All right. Great work. Now I have two new trick words for you for unit eight. The first one is could. He could not believe what was happening? Could. Spell it. If you need to look up in your trick word section, go ahead. Okay, spell it with me. Go. C-O-U-L-D. Could. All right, my favorite. Beautiful. Say it. Beautiful. The flowers outside are beautiful when they bloom. Beautiful. All right, let's spell it together. Go. B E A U T I F U L. Beautiful. Nice job. And I have one sentence for you today. The sentence is Can I? Nope, it's not. It's Can the kids? Can the kids, can the kids handle, mm, that's a unit eight word. Can the kids handle that simple puzzle? I'll read it again all together. Can the kids handle that simple puzzle? One more time. Can the kids hand handle that simple simple a lot of unit eight words puzzle? Can the kids handle that simple puzzle? All right, let's see how we did. I'm pretty sure you did great with can the kids, K-I-D-S. Okay, how'd you do with handle? Han, H-A-N-D-L-E, that is fine. Simple, S-I-M-P-L-E. And how'd you do with puzzle? P-U-Z-Z-L-E, very good. 
And did you remember a question mark? You're asking, can the hit, can the kids handle that simple puzzle? All right. And I went ahead and scoot mine as I was reading it back to myself. I did too. Can the kids handle that simple puzzle? All right. Nice work. And the last thing that we did today was our cursive uppercase practice with letters F and T. So if you're at home, get ready to have a piece of paper ready to practice letters F, uppercase, and uppercase T. All right, in case you forget how to form the uppercase F, watch this video so you know the steps. F is a skyline dip across letter. It starts on the skyline. Point to the skyline. Go across and make a dip on the skyline. Point to the middle of the line. Go down to the grass line and make a curve. Cross it on the plane line. Very good. And next is uppercase T. T is a skyline dip across letter. It starts on the skyline. Point to the skyline. Go across and make a dip on the skyline. Point to the middle of the line. Go down to the grass line and make a curve. Awesome. So really, T is like the F, except it doesn't cross on the plane line there in the middle, does it? All right. They're great. Excellent work today. Thanks for joining me, and I'll see you next time.